we've gone over the history and basics of each battery type. Now, how about some general tips for battery usage? Sounds like a great idea. And you're in luck, because I've stored up a whole bunch of batteries to talk about. Uh, how convenient. Lady Ada, you know a few things about batteries. How about we start with uh, lithium ion, like the one powering my Pi Girl here. Absolutely. Lithium ion and polymer batteries have the same chemistry, but they have different physical characteristics. Lithium ion batteries, for example, tend to come in cylindrical shapes and they can be packed into multiple cells. The lithium polymer batteries come in these silver packets and they can come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Because lithium polymer batteries are so delicate, you have to make sure not to overvolt them, undervolt them, or draw too much current. Make sure that each of your polymer cells has a protection circuit. You can see the circuit here, it's under the yellow translucent tape. Lithium polymer and ion batteries require specialized chargers, so make sure that when you're charging your battery, you're using a charger designed specifically for lithium polymer ion batteries. Our MicroLipo line is really easy to use because you can just charge a battery off of a USB port. But you can also use one of our solar chargers and power your batteries from the sun. Another small thing to watch out for, make sure that your lithium ion batteries are 3.7 voltage type. Some older batteries are 3.6 volt type and they're not compatible. You can tell which voltage battery you have by looking for the text. It'll always be labeled, even if it's really small. It's not a good idea to mix and match lithium ion or polymer batteries, even if they're the same size and chemistry. So if your project has a lot of batteries, make sure to charge each one individually. When powering your project with lithium ion or polymer batteries, you have two ways of going about it. You can use a 3.3 volt low dropout regulator if your device is 3.3 volt logic and power, like this Feather Huzzah. If your device requires 5 volt power, you might need to boost the power up, like with this power boost. This will convert the 3.7 volts from this battery to 5 volts USB. Lithium ion batteries come in a hard shell case, so they're pretty durable. But lithium polymer batteries, to save size and space, come in these soft silver pouches, so they're quite delicate. So make sure not to fold, bend, spindle, or mutilate these batteries. For safety, a lot of consumer products will put their lithium polymer batteries inside of a hard case like this. For example, for use in a flying drone. Wow, those are lightweight. And one last thing I wanted to cover on lithium ion batteries is the ubiquitous USB battery pack. These are pretty handy because they come with a lithium ion battery, a charger, and a boost converter. Makes it really easy to make portable USB devices. Which means I can finally have a portable plasma globe. Oh, finally. Fi finally. Okay, so lithium is fragile, pricier, good for advanced users. A more basic option would be alkaline. Yeah, you could use alkalines or nickel metal hydrides. Nickel metal hydrides. Yeah. Yeah, just... And you're in luck, because I brought a whole bunch of them with me as well. The most common sizes for alkaline and nickel metal hydride batteries range from a small AAA battery to this big honking D cell. Finally, we've got the odd one out, the 9 volt cell. This one has a nominal voltage of 9 volts, but the capacity is only 500 milliamp hours. One thing to watch out for is with alkaline batteries, the voltage starts at about 1.6 volts and ends at about 1.2. Whereas with nickel metal hydride batteries, they start at 1.3 volts and at about 1.0. Now, doesn't sound like a big difference, but when you put a lot of cells in series, that can add up to quite a big voltage difference. And speaking of series, because alkaline and nickel metal hydride batteries are about 1.5 volt nominal, you can add them together in series to create higher voltage battery packs. Like this three AAA battery pack, which will give you a nominal voltage of 4.5 volts. Or this four times AA battery pack holder, which will give you a nominal voltage of about six volts. In fact, that's how a nine volt battery is made. If you opened one up, you'd find six little alkaline cells all in series. So alkaline and nickel metal hydride, both 
durable, affordable, and readily available. Yeah, and uh, I think we covered them pretty well. Mm. Hey, yeah. how much does a dead battery cost? How much, Colin? Nothing. It's free of charge. Okay. Moving on. Tell me what you know about coin cells. Okay. Coin cells are silver, round, and pretty skinny, just like coins. Now, they come in multiple different chemistries, but they tend not to be rechargeable, so single use only. And the trade-off for their very small size is they can't give you a lot of current. So not good for high power electronics, really good for very low power devices. Coin, or button cell batteries as they're sometimes called, all have about the same shape, but they come in different sizes depending on their usage. Now, they also come in multiple chemistries, from lithium cells that are about 3 volts to alkaline, zinc air, or silver oxide, which are about 1.5 volts. So make sure to check the packaging for the right size you need. Because of the coin cell's small and slippery shape, you're going to need a specialized holder to use these kinds of batteries. We have a wide variety, from a breadboard-friendly coin holder with an on-off switch to sewable ones that you can use for wearables with conductive thread. We even have this really nice double cell holder that gives you a 6-volt output, comes with a JST connector and a nice on-off switch. Coin cells are ideal for portable and low-power electronic projects like sewable wearable electronics, small development boards like this Adafruit Gemma, RF remotes, this one runs off of two coin cells. You can even use it to power a multimeter, like this one. Another handy trick you can do with coin cells is they make for really good LED testers. So how does one know if they can use coin cells to power their project? Really good question. You want to check out our multimeter video and use your multimeter in current measurement mode to make sure that the current draw of your project is less than 10 or 20 milliamps. Quick, heads or tails? Uh, heads. Which, which side is heads? Positive side? Negative has more electrons. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, we definitely covered a lot of ground here, hopefully dispelling some of the mysteries of portable power for people out there. Thank you for coming by. Absolutely. Thanks, Colin. I, uh, I hope I have granted you great power over batteries. I, I do feel a little bit different. OK, cool. So can you do all the cleanup here? Thank you. I, did, I didn't say yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs>